Yes, part man, part machine, all cop, what else? But of course, 1980s sci-fi film Robocop, if you didn't recognise that theme tune. But whatever about the future of law enforcement, could we now be looking to Robocrop for all our agricultural needs? Well, the world's first raspberry-picking robot has gone on trial in the UK and it's aimed at helping farmers battle rising labour costs. Let's get more from Kevin Curran. He's a professor of cybersecurity at Ulster University. Good morning, Kevin. Good morning, Amanda. Tell me more about Robocrop. Robocrop is a robot developed by Field World, Field Work Robotics, and they're working in partnership with one of the largest main berry growers in the UK who supply Tesco's and Marks and Spencer's. And what they've developed is a robotic arm which can really, you know, just pick berries. How does it not squish them? Well, it, it's it got sensors. It would, have a, it would have a haptic feedback so it knows what the right amount of pressure okay. to put on. But it also takes its time. If you watch the video that they put out, it takes one minute to pluck one berry. Okay. Now, they do say that they have it working where it takes 10 seconds for to pick a raspberry. Um, again, and the whole vision is that these will replace workers again, so that the average worker in an eight-hour shift can can manage to pick 15,000 berries, but um, they say that this robot will be able to manage 25,000 in a, in, a, in a day. That's pretty impressive, but is it likely that we will see these robots across farms anytime soon? It's possible. At the moment, I mean, technology always gets better. At the moment, they've spent £700,000 to develop this. Now, we're, we're seeing one arm working at the moment in the video. They say when it's working in full production, it's got four arms picking simultaneously. <laughs> they've also went to the fruits, which is the most difficult, like the berry, because it's easy squash. But they've done it on tomatoes and they've done cauliflower. Um, again, that there is this shortage, especially in the UK, that there's 30% shortage in the labour market because of the, re, you know, the, the deflation in the pounds and Brexit and also the economies back home in Romania and Poland that these people are not coming here so a lot of fruit is actually going to waste now but it, it's, it's it is a difficult thing for a robot to do because you're dealing with low light conditions you're dealing dealing with something which is very soft also moving in the breeze so you have to apply quite have advanced sensors which these robots do they have 3d cameras they also use machine learning to be able to figure out you know what is a berry what's not a berry and they've also got to work out how ripe it is as well get the berry, take it, transfer it into a punnet, and then obviously they're, then they're sorted by the maturity of the fruit. That's pretty mind-blowing. If you think about a machine and it's going, mm, that one's ripe, that's not ripe, that's a raspberry, that's... How do you even begin to start to make something like that? Uh, I, I mean, I mean, before, I mean, there's a lot of, you know, robotics are used in the industry quite a lot, you know, and there's worries about the future, about a lot of jobs being brought over, you know, being taken over by robots, yeah. but they are getting pretty advanced. We're seeing, you know, like the, the, the major companies in the world are Boston Robotics, and they have the most lifelike robot, you know, so again, with advances in sensors, again, camera vision especially, and also the most important thing, which has really helped these robots advance, is the rise of machine learning, again, being able to process images, because we have these large data sets, which the likes of Google and Facebook have collected, and they've trained them uh, on large data sets and they are getting extremely good now at being able to use vision processing which is really the most important thing for these robots actually is the camera is being able to detect what it's looking at and figure out what to do because it actually has you know is it has trained itself in so many images prior to this and really it's just the sophisticated cameras on board these robots which really make things possible Fascinating stuff. Kevin Curran, Professor of Cybersecurity at Ulster University. Thank you. I hope I don't see one when I'm out in a walk. That would scare me. A large robot in a bush. I'm going to get on the right side of them. I, for one, welcome our new robotic overlords there. That's me in the clear. 729. <laughs>